Hello. So, I'm Philip Brown. I'm the Secretary of the United Nations Association Coventry Branch. And today, I'm going to deliver a presentation about the United Nations and peace. So, we are going to be talking about the United Nations and peace. And we are the United Nations Association, Coventry Branch. What is the United Nations Association? It's a UK charity. It's based in London. It acts as a pressure group on the UK government, and it also organises branches around the UK and in many universities. And these branches organise various events and activities. The branches normally um, engage, try to engage the public on UN related issues. Within universities, they might be more concerned with things like Model United Nations. The Coventry branch runs a website, unacov.uk, and you will be able to find this presentation on that website. And an important thing to notice is that the United Nations Association is not part of the UN. So, what is the United Nations? It was created at the end of the Second World War with the aim to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. There had been two world wars and people did not want a third. Nobody in the world wanted a third world war. The UN Charter is its founding document and the UN is currently made up of 193 member states. So, member states, in other words nations such as the United Kingdom, United States, France, Germany, these countries are the members of the United Nations. It does not include members of the public. We belong to our nations, and the nations, uh, our nations belong to the United Nations. Each member state has one vote in a group called the General Assembly. And this General Assembly is the place where policy is made, and it represents the United Nations. So every government all 193 members has an equal vote. There are other main organs of the United Nations which include the Security Council and we will talk about that later on. The Economic and Social Council, ECOSOC, which organises lots of other different uh, agencies. The Trusteeship Council, which in fact does very little nowadays because there are not many trusteeships which were islands which were entrusted to the United Nations. And the, another important agency is the International Court of Justice. The United Nations also has a secretariat of several thousand people and these are the people who actually run the United Nations on behalf of its member states. The Secretariat is um, headed by a Secretary General. Currently it's Antonio Guterres, who is Portuguese, and he is described here as being equal parts of a diplomat and an advocate. He has to talk to heads of government, He's an advocate. He's an advocate for the things that the UN stands for. Peace and security, justice and human rights and sustainable development. And we'll come back to those key points later on. He's also an international civil servant. As I said, he's the chief administration officer of the UN and he is the boss of the secretariat. 
the UN system, as well as the branches or the organisations, the agencies we've already mentioned, it consists of many affiliated programmes. So the World Food Programme, WFP, is one of them. Come back to that later on. Um, UNI, the, the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, is another. There are funds and special agencies. There are lots of different groups. Here's one of the funds, UNICEF, the UN um, Fund for Children. And all of these agencies, funds, organisations work together to bolster international peace and security. And we'll return to that again and again one of the three principal aims of the UN is to establish international peace and security. And as I said before, it was established to prevent nations being um, subject again to the scourge of war after the Second World War. You could argue that the United Nations has succeeded in that there has not been another world war in the 75 years since the UN was founded. Another of the aims of the UN is to promote sustainable development, sustainable and inclusive development. So that's the second or another one of the three main aims. And the third one is justice and human rights. So here we have the third of the three main pillars of the UN. So it's peace and security, justice and human rights, and sustainable development. And these images were taken from a video by created by the Department of Public Information at the UN. So, just to summarise those three pillars, peace and security, justice and human rights, and sustainable development. This presentation is going to deal with peace and the United Nations. And at the moment, there are a number of peacekeeping operations. So peacekeeping is one of the main tasks that the members of the UN undertake. So, as we'll see in a minute, it's not the UN itself which sends peacekeepers, it's member states. And often they are soldiers or other members of the, that, uh, citizens of those nations. And so here we have a list of the current uh, peacekeeping operations. As, as you see, several in Africa, four in the Middle East, um, others are, one or two others around the world. So, more about peacekeepers. So, since 1948, there have been a million, more than a million peacekeepers which have served the United Nations. They wear blue berets or blue helmets and they carry the blue UN flag. More than 120 countries contribute their troops and their police to UN peacekeeping. So that's more than half the countries in the world. What do peacekeepers do? They protect people if they are threatened by violence. They monitor human rights. They ensure humanitarian assistance. They disarm um, violent people and store the arms safely and they serve as role models to the people within the countries where they act. Peacekeepers often put themselves in danger and more than three and a half thousand have been killed during their service with the UN and this affects their families, obviously, and their friends and relations deeply. So it is not a trivial thing to be a peacekeeper. 
that every day they are acting with courage and compassion and they are the best chance for peace for some of the world's most vulnerable people. And as you see here, there are female peacekeepers as well as male. So that's a, a blue helmet with a UN peacekeeper logo. And this is the hashtag that they use, serving for peace. And again, these images came from the United Nations. However, there have been criticisms of peacekeepers. In Haiti, cholera was introduced by uh, peacekeepers from Nepal and they were blamed for spreading it around the country, resulting in many deaths. Um, the United Nations peacekeepers um, in Srebrenica failed to prevent a massacre of over 8,000 men, Muslim men. And there have been allegations of sexual abuse by peacekeepers. Now, some people will blame the UN for these things. In fact, as I say, it's not the UN who sends in peacekeepers, it's nations. And so you could argue that it's not the fault of the UN. It's the fault of the nations um, and the, the forces who commanded these soldiers and policemen who failed to get them to act properly. I want to talk a little bit about the Security Council, which is the main body of the United Nations, one of the main bodies, the other one was the General Assembly, which all member nation states um, belong to. The Security Council is a much smaller body and it's charged with ensuring international peace and security. That is what it's supposed to do. In other words, to put the first aim of the UN into practice, it has 15 members. They're all member states, of course. Five of them are permanent. China, France, Russia, the United Kingdom, and the United States. And so, we notice that the United Kingdom has a special role within the Security Council. Those five permanent members have a veto over any motion, any resolution which is put to the Security Council. In other words, they can stop anything. The other ten members who are um, elected from the General Assembly cannot do that. It's only those five permanent members. And in fact, they were the victorious nations after the Second World War. So, the Security Council has had failures. On average, three new wars have started every year since the United Nations was formed, which amounts to hundreds of wars over the past 75 years. However, most of these are civil wars, and the United Nations finds it very difficult to intervene within nations. The United Nations is there to stop conflict between nations. If a nation declare, for example, you know, if you have different constituent parts of a nation and they start fighting, it's really down to the government to stop that fighting. And in fact, the, the government will often take part in the fighting. So that's very frequent. The United Nations cannot tell governments what to do. The way that the world works at the moment is these 193 nation states, the governments are sovereign. They can do what they like. There have been examples of the United Nations trying to step in when governments have exceeded what seems reasonable, but those interventions have often not been very successful. And, as I mentioned before, the permanent five, the P5 members, often veto or, or can veto any resolution, and this can prevent the, the United Nations from acting, as most other nations would hope. 
It's not all been failures, however, and we're going to list a few of the successes of the United Nations. So, it has allowed nations to discuss problems instead of fighting. So, frequently if there are tensions between nations, the UN, the Secretary General, very often will send in a representative to negotiate, or he himself can go and negotiate with governments, talk to both sides, try and find a peaceful resolution. And that is a major part of what the UN does, to try to reconcile conflicting sides of, a, of an argument and bring peace to the situation. The United Nations feeds thousands and thousands of people every year, as we'll see in a minute. It provides emergency supports for victims of atrocities. It tackles climate change and other global problems, and it's a leader in doing so. And I mentioned the sustainable development ambition of the UN. There are 17 sustainable development goals, and one of them is to tackle climate change. Um, it also has the World Meteorological Organization as one of its um, associate agencies, and that produces forecasts of what climate change will be and helps to helps government decide on their policies. It prevents conflict through increased diplomacy. It protects human rights with over 80 treaties and declarations. It helps around 30 million women a year with maternal health problems. It assists 50 countries a year with their elections and it supports millions of refugees. Just to mention one of the agencies, just to we haven't got time to focus on all of those, um, but the World Food, Food Programme, um, recently it assisted 97 million people by bringing them food. It has thousands of trucks, it has ships, it has aeroplanes, delivering food and other assistance to those most in need. And this year, 2020, it won the Nobel Prize for Peace. Um, if you want news about UN-related activities in Coventry, please visit our website, unacov.uk. There's a newsletter. Um, you can suggest ideas for what you think we should do or ask us questions at unacoventry at gmail.com. So this has been a presentation by the United Nations Association Coventry Branch. Thank you very much for watching.